How are you doing, mate? It's good to meet you. Good, good. So it's fitting uh, with today being World Mental Health Day uh, that we're able to come together with yourself. Uh, we are Hummingbird and DJ uh, Orbit Retreats to uh, to spend some time. Can I start again? Yeah. <laughs> Orbit DJ Retreats. <laughs> I can see your face. <laughs> uh, Stop and start that, Andy. Sorry, man. Sorry, mate. I couldn't have concentrated if I'd have carried on. <laughs> Getting the names is like the hardest part, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. DJ Orbit. Oh, DJ. Yeah. He's playing later. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my favourite. DJ Orbit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Hey, Kai, how you doing? Good cool. Evening. So, uh, seems fitting that we get to meet on World Mental Health Day. Um, bringing together yourself, We Are Hummingbird and Orbit DJ Retreats at this amazing venue, the music in the background. We wanted to take uh, the chance to really talk about yourself, your background, have a bit of conversation around all the excitement and all the things that kind of seem to be bubbling under at the moment around mental health and how people are talking about it more and starting to get more and more involved uh, and really kind of hopefully spread the word a bit more, there's stuff people need to talk and start engaging a bit more with each other. So, I mean, it'd be great if we could hear more about your background and what you've experienced and what brings you to this point now, if that's all right. Okay, yeah, no problem. So, uh, yeah, my kind of background over the last, I'd say, 20 years, um, I was I had a really good upbringing as a kid, a uh, huge, huge family. Um, and uh, I joined the army at 16 years old. I got kicked okay. out of school at a very young age, um, just for being really naughty. Yeah. Uh, I was one of the naughtiest kids I think ever in history of that school. So I never passed my exams, I was kicked out of school. Okay. I went on to join the British army at 16. Yeah. Uh, I was one of the youngest ever um, soldiers to join the British army. Um, I spent four years in the military. Uh, I had a, I had a, it was like a good and bad time. Uh, the bad times ended up me getting put in prison, military prison. Okay. Um, and getting sectioned under the Mental Health Act. Um, due How to, old were you then, sorry? I was 20. 20 okay. years old, yeah. Um, lost the plot a little bit, got involved. Being bullied quite bad in the army and, yeah, ended up losing it and kind of going on the defence. And Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I've done my short four years spill in the army, um, which then led me on to a lot of travelling and stuff. And ended up in Ibiza okay. at the age of 20. Come out for a party and... Yeah. yeah. Um, came out here and done a summer out here. Um, went on in and out of various sales jobs most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, but I spent the majority of the time, I'd say 20 to 25, was when I got my first job with Thomas Cook. Yeah. And I was a holiday vet, so I was okay. traveling the world, Tenerife and yeah. Spain and Greece, uh, which is kind of where I got the first insight to putting on events and parties from being a holiday vet, yeah. to organize the big ones. And then, yeah, um, ended up back in Ibiza five and a half years ago with my partner and my son, and that's where my kind of promoting career really took off uh, yeah. in Ibiza. With kind yeah. of, that was in 2015. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, you mentioned about, um, I'm going to go back to when you were in the army, and you mentioned about the struggles you had and, and the situations and, and being <laughs> sectioned. So, um, can you tell us more about that and explain? Maybe we've got people that don't even know what sectioned yeah. and being sectioned means. So it'd be um, interesting to know. So, yeah, I went through, uh, when I joined the army at 16, I was quite confident at, at that time, undiagnosed with ADHD. So I was quite an outspoken teenager growing up and quite naughty. So when I got into the British forces and people tried to tell me, you can't do, you yeah, can't yeah. do that, my reaction was that like, I can do what I want. Yeah. That's all I've done at school. Yeah. Uh, ended up, yeah, getting in so much trouble that, um, yeah, I got, got, got got booted out and then got, I got put in a military prison for a year and a half which I escaped from okay um, it was an open prison which meant you were locked it, as a normal prison would be inside yeah and the difference see when you used to do fitness you, we used to run outside the prison and all around yeah. the local yeah. town with guards but I managed to you just think go back yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah ended up doing another six months in prison um, of which the only way I could get out of the army at that time because I didn't want to be in they were yeah. going to send me back to the regiment yeah was to, to try and get out on the mental mental okay. health uh, reasons, and I did. I managed to blag it out. So was that then? Do you think um, because you're open about the mental uh, health and your mental illnesses in the past? Do you think that was the trigger point for you that it started started this all off, or was it just a coincidence that that's what you used at that time? Yeah, I just think I don't know. I just think I was always a bit of a 
mental kid growing up, but no, like... Because of the ADHD, just, right? Yeah, people were just like, he's naughty, he doesn't want to yeah, go. Yeah. And I was like a runaway. My mum and dad were amazing, but I was just always do silly things yeah. that got me in trouble. And then, yeah, I think I was introduced to drugs in the army. That's the first time I'd ever taken... First time? Yeah, ecstasy. Not, okay. Nothing else. It was like back then, late 90s, it was yeah. kind of ecstasy was still a the, the, the drug of choice yeah. on the dance floor. See, I was taking quite a lot of drugs at the weekend as yeah. well as serving as a soldier. Yeah, that yeah. was kind of the common thing to do. Um, but yeah, I'd say that was probably my first time I'd ever experienced like being locked up 23 hours a day uh, yeah. for the six months I was in there. When my mum and dad used to come and visit, I was behind a screen. Screen and looking down. Um, so loads of time to think, loads of time to reflect. Loads of time to think. I learned to read properly as well. Cause I okay. read. Bear in mind, I, I got through school and I still yeah. couldn't read by the time I left. That's okay. how bad. I was kind of treated at school where they yeah. kind of just gave up on me. Yeah. So by the time I'd left secondary school, I couldn't read or write properly. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So you go, you have your first kind of experience of being sectioned or locked up at, at so, early uh, 20s? No, I was in college, yeah, 19, 20. Okay. Like my birthday, you know, I'm about okay. my 20th birthday. You know. Out of the army, traveling around, where do you think it took you, you know, what was your mental state over the years of this? Where, what was the kind of progression or where did you get to that kind of made you think something doesn't quite feel right here? I, I say from 21 to 30, I don't really remember much. It was kind okay. of in and out of sales jobs, being really yep. good at them. And then just moving to another one. And I literally went from, I worked in for mobile phones for years and I worked in all different kind of retail and car sales, yep. jumping from job to job. And I just, I don't know, I lived for the weekends. So yep. It was like- The escapism, escape, the kind well, of, what yeah. What was the escapism? Just buying cocaine and I got involved in obviously selling it, yep. it, which is saying, you know, I've put my hands up, I've been involved in it, yeah. you know, um, for years and years back in the day. And so I know all about that. Yeah, you know, so yeah, I've yeah. been there, done it, done, done, it, done yeah. it. But yeah, I'll say it was getting introduced to drugs probably in my 20s, the cocaine mm -hmm. was a massive blur. I kind of blurred them to Blurred years. it, just blanked it all out. And then I didn't really grow up until I moved here when I was 30. Yeah. That's kind of when my life just went, well, my, I had my son. Yeah. Everything kind of fell into place yep. at the time. At the it. time, yeah. But what do I thought was the place, yeah. Do you think you were, um, so some of the things that we hear a lot, or I talk about a lot with what I do, is the difference between happiness and contentment. And people tend to chase happiness and yeah. think that if I, get, if I get this, then I'll be happy. If I get this, I'll be happy. If I achieve this, if I do this. But what often happens is that feeling of um, euphoria quickly wears off and then you need to chase the next thing and the yeah, next thing. I mean, do you think you found an element of that when you kind of came over this way? Um, yeah, for me, it was just about getting rich. I yep. like, right, I'm on that, I've worked in jobs where it's just been trying to be number one all the time, get the biggest paychecks. Yep. And as soon as we went into promoting, it was just about, for me, it's like, obviously love doing parties, yeah. but I, I, I was like, we send them out, loads yeah, of money. Yeah. And then, yeah, there was just a turning point. Um, and that was when I went to Uganda. And yep. I built the school and I was just like, no, for me, come back, ended up getting rid of one of the nice cars I had. Yeah, and yeah. Just switched my life up completely. It was like, it's not, it's not so much about money anymore. That was like two years ago, two and a bit years ago. And money now to me is completely different to what it yeah, was five years yeah. ago when I first moved here. And do you think, you've, you think uh, you've hit that point where you're more content now, you see how other people are living and you start to think, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't I'm, need to strive. So, yeah, I don't now. Like, my thing now is helping others yeah. reach the success that I've got. Mm -hmm showing them the best way to get there. Sometimes I do it too much. Yeah. You know, it takes Knowing energy, where your boundaries yeah, are, yeah, completely. A lot of the time, it's what I love doing now. Okay. Yeah. So when you, when, where did you get to from uh, that point where you went to Uganda, which was around two years ago, you said, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we spoke the other day and I'm sure we'll share it that you're, you're now um, clean and sober for a period of time, which we'll come on to and let you, you mention. But what kind of happened in that period then from Uganda to where we are now and what kind of journey have you been on? Um, Uganda just, uh, just was just supposed to be a small project. Me and, me and my business partner, Peter, are going, building a small school. Yeah. We thought, it's, it's, it's that simple, you know, yeah. we cover the teacher's fees and medical bills and then it became so big so quick the abode project became bigger than abode at one yeah. point and we we were like you know the school's a success you know and we, the, the kids now needed to uh graduate year, year year one and go up to year two so we needed to build more classrooms yeah so we ended up building this huge school and it's still not finished yet so we do the volunteer trips yeah. now and yeah. we, we do one of them every year where like 45 volunteers come and they raise a load of money yeah so yeah the last two years has just been my main focus has been obviously the parties, yeah. the charity, the charity and side of things. looking after myself. I was in 
as you know, some pretty bad places. Probably like three years ago, four years ago. And then, then I've kind of just cruised along, thinking I was all right. Yeah. And yeah. Like four months ago, had a massive breakdown. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And you happy to talk more about yeah, that and, and yeah. tell us kind of because I think this is key for 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 us to understand and, and especially on a day like today. Um, statistics suggest that, that men don't talk very well um, and, and whilst this conversation isn't just about men I think it's really important that we start driving home uh, I know we've spoken as well and had similar discussions around when we open up how others around us open up and I think the more we can not be ashamed to talk about it ourselves that we can hopefully give strength to other people so if you're happy to we'd love to know more kind of around that yeah. um yeah I last couple of years I've had Obviously, your bow's blown up massively um, at Amnesia. Uh, that kind of came out of nowhere for, just for my business partner yeah. working cleverly and hard. So yeah, Amnesia, two years ago, we just got a, like an email out of the blue offering us a deal. So obviously, your bow's gone like this and your bow project's blown up and the bow's growing. And I've kind of gone from three years ago just being Kai yeah. to becoming Kai Abode, which was I changed the handle on my Instagram yeah. and I became this kind of almost like a brand and yep. uh, yeah it's just been mad so it was I didn't have many friends growing up mm -hmm. I had friends but I wasn't someone I wasn't in a football team yeah so I didn't have a huge circle of friends so then the last couple of years and everyone just wanted photos and which I'm not used to yeah. and, and come everyone wanted to chat to me and be around me and it was yeah it's just been really hard to deal with that yeah and then on top of that I've got my son Freddie who's uh, non-verbal yeah. he's nearly six and uh he's, he's on the autism spectrum so we're kind of i've been working with this for the last kind of two years at an important age now where his speech is you know yeah. he's getting old now so we need to look out for that so i've got my businesses here i've got all the abode projects i've got my son um but which i'm trying to be a full-time yeah. dad too and then uh, what what i thought was a, a drug just a bit of fun turned into me thinking actually i've got a problem here yeah. whilst doing cocaine three times a week <coughs> yeah Wednesday every Thursday to early hours of the morning and um, I wasn't a massive drinker but I was drinking three four times a week yeah and I, every time I'd have a drink I'd just do cocaine yeah I'd probably say 99% of people around me are, are, are the same yeah. except yeah I was doing more and more drugs um, I've been doing it a lot longer and then yeah it just it my, just I was up and down like a yo-yo um, <laughs> missus was just like having to drag me out of bed um i didn't want to get up didn't want to go to the gym wanted to get just yeah. basically sell my company and walk away from everything with all mad thoughts going from my head and this was this was only like yeah it, it wasn't ago. long ago was it and yeah. it's amazing that you're sat here now when we're talking about it and and kind of it's it's got to be raw mm -hmm. um do you think uh, that the the you know you talk there about not getting out of bed and the kind of loss of enjoyment and these stresses and all these things? Do you think that was drug induced, or do you think you uh, your mental health had, had taken had had so much um, negativity, so to speak, that you were starting to develop a mental illness? Was that a stem of it? Do you think you were developing a depression, perhaps, or was it just that you were were living this life that was causing your body to feel a certain way? I think yeah, probably. Like my my dad was diagnosed with uh, PTSD in the fire brigade, and he was like discharged years ago, yep. like 20 years ago. So I've, I've seen my dad struggle all through his life, and so I felt myself turning into my dad, which was yeah. like signs. And I was just depressed and constantly down. And I thought, I just thought, like I've done, I've got a boat to where it is, sell out. I'll just be happy. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. To be on the phone and. Yeah, I think where I was where I was taking cocaine on a Wednesday, which is which was one of my parties, and on a Thursday and two early hours, and then sometimes I'd even just get up in the morning, and if I had some left, I'd do it just on a Friday it, morning. Yeah. And, and I look back now, and I'm like, what the fuck was I doing? Like, yeah. What was, is it? And I was like, have, have I got? A, am I an addict? Is it a habit? And I thought, no, because everyone else does it. Yeah. The same amount as me. Yeah. And I'm like, no, this is this is a problem. If I can't go out to a club. Or through a beer, yeah. or to a restaurant without yeah. taking it. That's a for me. That's, that's a habit. A, yeah, definitely. But then I'm like, fucking everyone around me is the same. So, like, I'm does everyone have habits? And then it, yeah, 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 it's like a mini <laughs> habit. Because if you can't physically go yeah. out without having to take cocaine, like I mean, socialising pubs, and yeah, we've got an issue yeah. here. But it seems to be everyone around me, yeah. and probably everyone around them. And I, I hate to say, I don't know many people that 
don't yeah. do it two, three times a week. Uh, I, I've no. seen, I, and that's the thing now. And, and whilst, whilst we want to, you know, we want to talk about, you know, how that affects mental health. You, you see that people, especially in in the music industry and creative individuals, when they think, well, such and such is doing it, and they're okay. So, you know, surely I'm okay as well. It's, it must be, if they're okay doing it, then, then what I'm feeling must just be the norm and this just must be how it is and I just suck it up and deal with it it's kind of thing. Like we've been it's like it's conditioned, yeah. but even with like, you look at the famous DJs, like the mega famous ones and, you know, it, it's so, if they're doing it, yeah. you know, in front of all the punters and <clears> like stage and <throat> things, it's just seen as, yeah. it's seen as the yeah, norm. And I've found recently since, since I stopped doing it, I do, you get alienated. Yeah. Even backstage at a festival I was at in the summer, like I walk backstage and everyone I can see everyone go, oh, yeah. Like, like put it away, Kai's coming. I was like, you know. Yeah, like you've changed <laughs> this some kind of individual. Yeah. Uh, like I'm, the, but I get it because I was. If you'd have told me this like 19 weeks ago, I'd have yeah. Shut up. But now I've seen what it's done to me, and I'm watching people around me. I've, you know, I've got three friends, close friends I've yeah, recently yeah. pretty much taken on and started giving them my own counselling yeah. and checking them into rehabs and things. That's since to, to, to do it. Do you think that people behave this way because they're nervous about, they don't know how to handle the situation, i.e. being that you, you've experienced something and you're now on a different path. They feel that they don't know how to talk to you or they just no longer want to hang out with you. I mean, what, what do you think it is? Yeah, I just think a lot of it is, obviously I'm the boss, yeah. um, and I see me as Clyde Bow, but I think a lot of it is, because I'm quite, I'm, I've been quite um, verbal about it online, so yeah. I think a lot of people might read my stuff and probably don't want to be a bit embarrassed that I'm watching yeah. them do it, yeah. because they know that, you know, if I've got, most of the people around me now can't go out about doing it. Yeah. So that, that everything I write online, it's just from the heart. Now yeah. Read it and be like, it's aimed, it's aimed at me. Yeah. Rather than think actually, it, it's you know, it's of their own paranoia. I think it's a mix, yeah, it's a mixture <laughs> of like when people are on cocaine, they, yeah. they just they instantly kind of a bit snip, you know, mm -hmm. what's the word? Yeah. Like, everyone's a bit twitchy, yeah, a bit twitchy, a bit yeah. paranoid. Um, maybe they can. They read into stuff wrong, and I've, I've noticed it. It's really difficult to be around now. It's it's um, and it's interesting you say it because I think one of the things that certainly in the industry that I'm in with mental health, mental illness, um, the stereotype, stereotype and stigma that goes with that still is. You know, a lot of people think if I open up and talk about this, people are going to treat me differently. Uh, and people do still treat people differently because they don't know how to react to that. They might over discriminate, i.e. go completely over the top, um, or they might discriminate in a, in a negative way. And it's kind of, I think that's for me, when I look around, one of the biggest problems that we have with, with people being able to talk about their mental illnesses or mental health or when they're having dips is the fear of how other people are going to behave with them, really. it's. Um, you know, I've seen some of the bits and pieces that, that you've put online and I've, I've read some it and it is, it's really honest and heartfelt and and there was one bit that I want to reflect on if it's okay and it's kind of always stuck with me and um, it was talking about the day that you went off uh, and I don't know if you recall this, this comment, uh, but you went off to find a tree Yeah. and um, that, that will probably always stay with me, certain things always do and for me in that message, the rawness of you describing how desperate you'd become that you'd gone to earmark the tree to use to to end your life um is huge and if you're happy to i yeah. you know it i'd like only, to it was like less than it was 19 weeks ago yeah. and yeah having a you know, not a great time with some close friends of mine um and uh yeah it was literally i just i was overthinking and i was so low and just i felt like i'm just taking a battery in all summer from taking drugs and yeah. i felt paranoid i felt like people were talking behind my back you know friends of mine and stuff and then yeah i couldn't i just couldn't i was trying everything i was trying yoga and all this stuff and Nothing in the working. end i was like there's not there's, i can't go on anymore this this isn't the life i want and then um yeah literally that literally googled yeah. how to tie a noose yeah um yeah and it went, 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 literally yeah the only thing i didn't do was climb literally climb the tree. that's that's how bad it was yeah but, um and it's an interesting thing i don't know if you know this but um uh, thoughts of suicide are, are actually more common than people realise. So what you went through, when you, you're not alone in this. It's, it's you know something like 20% of the population have the same kind of thoughts. The problem that we've got is that you know, and it's so brave of you to to, to talk about this and to to open up about this, and hopefully it gives people the strength and courage. Because until those 20% feel that they're able to express themselves, 
that will continue. And until they feel that they can say, look, uh, I'm still me, this is who I am, but I have these thoughts, and not be judged or, 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 or thought to be in any way less a person than anyone else, the problem's gonna continue. And, and suicide's completely preventable. You don't, you know, it, it's an illness that leads to suicide, you know? If people get early enough intervention and care and are able to open up and say, guys, I feel like this, and not have the fear of stereotypal stigma or anything that goes with it, that's the only way we move forward with this. So, you know, for me, I, I applaud you for being able to sit there and kind of say that because we need more people to do that. It's hard, it's, really, it's actually hard talking about it. Yeah, I could see, just, yeah, sorry. No, it's cool, it's just like, there's, I felt if, at my age, at 37, at the level I'm at, I felt, I, I was like, who's I go to? Yeah. Because I felt like people knew I wasn't well, but I felt like no, no, no one was coming. I yeah. didn't feel, I didn't get any, I felt like I didn't get any support from anyone. Everyone yeah. was just like, you're a bit mental, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't, you know, you, you, put, you don't, do you know what I mean? It's a bit mad, mad rather than actually coming over, you know. It's so interesting you say that. No, 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 and it, it's true because, because a, a huge percent of the time when people feel this way, they give off signs and uh, it's like crazy. Yet what we live in is a culture still where people shy away and pretend not to see them. And you would have been giving off yeah, plenty of signs yeah, yeah. and you'd have been, you know, saying, guys, I need someone to connect with me here. I'm not strong enough to connect with you. And again, this is the whole problem why, and, and today being World Mental Health Day and suicide prevention, why we need more people to be able to say, you know, where are you at, man? Is something going on that we need to know about? And ask directly, because as you said yourself, you wanted someone to reach out to you, yeah, so. Totally. I did, I had, I had people reach, eventually the right people, um, with, uh, you know, ex ex experts, but yeah. it took a good friend of mine to yeah. be like, look, you need to see someone. You need to see someone got me straight in and yeah got me into the right therapy and things but now I've since since then I've, I've had three very close friends one tried to take his own life yeah I put him on a plane moved into Ibiza yeah got him clean yeah I've had a couple of close people that fallen off the wagon the last two weeks yeah I've basically done treated I was like you've got to stop yeah stop doing this stop doing that put him on drinking bands and yeah. put him into out my own money I've been yeah. putting him into yoga sound healing different therapies because I can see these people and yeah. need help and that's just a, that's the kind of path I'm kind of taking now. So, so talking about um, so 14 weeks sober, I think it is, or 15, 18, sorry, 18 weeks sober, which is absolutely, you know, amazing. To be sitting here now, 18 weeks on, talking about where you were is, I mean, something you should be hugely proud of because the strength that it takes. And again, you, people might look at your, you know, what you put out there and be like, is this real, is it not? And sitting here with you now, uh, it's very real. It's, you know, I can feel it is, and, and I, I think anyone that thinks otherwise is, is misguided. So we've moved on from where we are, and I want to touch on some things then you said about recovery, uh, a yoga, meditation, retreats. How important is, is recovery to you, uh, and, and what does recovery mean to you? Um, yeah, I don't, because I wasn't an addict, as in, I, yeah. I felt like I, I wasn't doing it five, six, seven times a week. I was like, am I in recovery? So I've, I kind of, I guess I am, but I, it just, it, it hasn't even been difficult. It's yeah. been weird for me. I got, I went, I got the right therapy, uh, cognitive behavior yep. therapy. And yeah, I just felt like I haven't, I haven't thought about drinking drugs, which is mad. So I haven't, it's not one point I've gone, I need a beer yeah. or want to do drugs. Yeah. So, um, so, sorry to interrupt, but if anyone's watching and doesn't know what cognitive uh, yeah, behavior therapy is. I don't, use, I, don't, I don't really know too much about it. All I do know is a woman that's treating me at the moment um, has treated a, a, a lot of people in IB for some yeah. very famous people as well and has cured them from different addictions, um, yeah, whether it be like mental health or sexual yeah, addiction. Or, yeah. um, but yeah, she, she got into a part of my brain that was what she what she done was really clever so she she wanted to change my pattern and my yep. routine of where i am when i go out and what leads me to take drugs so she kind of asked me you know on a, on a normal night in amnesia where would you stand yeah uh, you know whatever club and who would you stand with yeah so what if he went here and stood there but went a bit later and left yep. before he got here and i was like i'll try it yeah week one done it two done it yeah three four and i was like Literally, yeah. if I don't stand with all them more, yeah. don't go there, if I don't go here, if I go out a bit later, if I do that, I won't take this trip. And that's what I've done. It's re sort of rebuilding a new belief system into yeah. you that, that it leads to a clearer lifestyle. I'm believing yeah. that, that I could get high 
off of nothing. Yeah, yeah. So I've literally, I haven't had it much. I had a couple of events where the music was so good and the energy was so good where I've gone, yeah, yeah, this and is really like, got I, feel it. Like I'm, I feel like I'm on a high. Yeah. So I still, you know, I've always relied on stimulants. So, yes. But, you know, and I drink a lot of coffee now, but again, that can be worse than cocaine sometimes if you drink four or five of them. But again, in, in it, but with coffee, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee um, uh, and, and I've, uh, people always say to me I need to have less, but for me, it's never really been an impact on me. I've taken a lot of caffeine and, and um, until it becomes to a point where I need to address it, I think I manage it quite well. But I know there's other things that if I, if I, if I drink too much of certain stuff, I, I'm, I'm gone within, within a matter of a few you know, sips. So it's all, it's all understanding what works for you and what, what the adjustment is. Um, recovery is interesting for me anyway. I always describe recovery for mental health as um, it's very different to a physical recovery. Like if you if you break your arm, you can see that you've broken it. You go into hospital, they operate, they put it in a cast, they take the cast off six weeks later, do a bit of rehab, and then wham, you're back to how you were. You're fixed. But obviously that doesn't help uh, happen with, with mental illnesses. And I think I always find that's often what people struggle with. They expect people to be fixed and go back to where they were before. And obviously that doesn't always happen. And, and, and it's, it's these therapies you talk about like yoga and meditation and time out, they play in my opinion such a huge part of the recovery model and allowing someone to live a fulfilled life again, no matter what their mental illness was prior to that. I think, so, that, I think the fitness for me, yeah. I stopped taking my antidepressants like two and a half years ago and started hitting the gym every yeah. day. And I genuinely believed that the fitness was my new antidepressant. Yeah. I was literally, if I missed the gym, yeah. I wasn't going to get big or get yeah. sick, but I literally go to the gym yeah. to keep mentally, mentally. I go twice a day now. And, yeah. But um, yeah, the gym for me, can pretty much cure a lot of stuff, in my opinion. Completely, uh, everyone, yeah. Everyone, but and sound healing, which I do loads of. Your body, your brain is a part of your body. You yeah, your exactly. Body, it's an organ. Yeah. If you're yeah. Physically well and fit. That's why so many people who struggle with depression say like, you know, exercise is the solution. Yeah. You don't want to hear it. Yeah. Because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's all in your head. Yeah. But as soon as they go out walking, running, going. Yeah. I, me yeah. I remember when I first. Your body feels better. Yeah. And your brain is part of that. People often uh, really forget that, you know. Cause I remember the first time I got um, got on antidepressants in England like three years ago, and uh, I was in and out in three or four minutes. Yeah. No like offer of yoga yeah. or like yeah. any like fitness advice. Um, yeah, it's like literally some tablets. It's some tablets and take them, yeah. And, what, and then now everyone's like CBD. So yeah. It's gone from like people I want to get off the tablets if I well I sell you some C B D it's kind yeah. of it's like just, you're getting off way it's like uh, mad everyone's yeah, making money off yeah. the back end of Completely. Like, drugs or, or people yeah. trying to get better. Yeah. Just, yeah. We, we mentioned then, and so we came through from the, from, you know, one of the things from the audience about mental health and mental illness. And one of the things that I do is really try and, as uh, part of We Are Hummingbird, is really try and educate people on the difference between mental health and illness. Because as it said, a lot of people, when you ask them what mental health means, they go to negatives. They start listing off essentially mental illnesses, depression, stress, anxiety. And often that's still what the, the, the you know, population believe to be the case. When in fact, uh, you know, mental health is every part of your life. It's how you th think, how you feel, how you behave, how you, how you act. Without mental health, there is no health. They're two in the same thing. And one of the things we've been talking about with the guys on the retreat here is, is how they can get a better balance of their mental health. You know, how they can make sure that they're spending enough time on savoring the good things and exercising, spending time with their friends, spending time expressing themselves, whether that be through making music or drawing or painting. All these things are what's needed to form a healthy, balanced life both mental health and physical health. And I think that's really important that we do kind of raise that point that, that mental health is everything. It's not just how you feel when you can't get out of bed, it's how you feel when you feel the sun on your back or you hug a friend you haven't seen in a while and you think, that was good, I enjoyed that. That's recharged me a little bit. It's, you know, it's really, you know, we, we've spoken, I see you now, smile on your face. You know, you always welcome into people. Do you feel this topping up your mental health when you're when you're able to be like this? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have bad days anymore. I used to 
if, if I had a bad email when I opened it, if I woke yeah. up in the morning and the first one got was a, a bad email, or just a shitty reply, yeah. it would wipe me out. I mean, like, I don't know whether, whether it'd be anxiety or what. I, I could get one yeah. message and be like, well, that's me done for the day, yeah. going back to bed. Yeah. And uh, no, I don't really have them days now. Yeah. Very, every, every day something positive is coming into my life. Yeah, good. Um, we're working on, as you, you know, the new uh, party in London, which we've got yeah. the time, but you know, I'm putting, so I, there's good things happening. Good. And it, this never happened to me yeah. back, in the, back day. in the day. I used to get a lot of sh shit yeah. on my way. Um, because I think I was attracting it yeah. into my life just through my lifestyle of drugs yeah. and drink. And yeah, since I've been on the right, well, the path I've chosen, which yeah. is the right one yeah. for everyone. Um, yeah, I'm happy and I've and, been, and I have a few wobbles with my sons and all yeah. that. I mean, don't we all? Yeah, I shout at my kids, and then I and then I regret doing it. Usually, um, there's a book I read, and it says always be the last person to shout. Uh, not only not only the last person to shout because you've kept your cool, but then everyone else is more worried because you haven't shouted, and then they're proper scared of you. But yeah, but it's um, it's uh, uh yeah, go Jordan. Yeah, Jordan, we've got a question. Um, yeah, so you talked a little bit about um, like maybe you weren't getting the right support from your friends at the time. You know, some friends then have managed to help them through it. Like, oh, maybe a question for both of you. Yeah. What would your advice be to um, anyone that feels like they know someone that is going through something and how to approach that situation to help yeah. them through it? Because, you know, it is hard also for the friends to know how to engage in those scenarios. Yeah. You know, what's yeah, the... I think, like, you, you'll notice as well. Yeah. Because anxiety, depression has, has become massive in the last two or three years on Instagram and uh, there's a lot of people that just hate on it and will just to this day even this morning when I was living yeah. people were like oh you know, here we go everyone with it on Facebook moaning about people moaning and it's like Jesus Christ like it's well made yeah. health day and yeah, yeah. people out there and these are the kind of yeah these are the kind of people you can't really go you can't really go to but yeah if you, you can normally tell there's a pattern I find that in the in the dance music industry with de uh, struggling DJs and promoters, we start getting a bit negative online, yeah. and writing negative stuff and getting involved in negative threads. Yeah. And I'm leaving Facebook. Yeah, I'm back yeah, Facebook. yeah. And that's that for me straight away is a sign Signs, of somebody yeah. on self destruction. Yeah. And you'll normally find in, on my face, you know, it's normally DJs that yeah. are, are out Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They're not getting the gigs they want to get. And yeah, it's really hard. I, yeah, like I said, I, I didn't know who to go to. I had some, I had a few friends messaging me. Yeah. But when I was really ill, and I was like, enough's enough. Yeah. Like, I was like, who, who do I who call? Do, call yeah. my mum. She was, I'll move back to England. Yeah. Um, because mum's like to fix. Yeah, so your mum's like, yeah, come back to England, it'd be I fixed. Like, and yeah, yeah, her. yeah. And she's like, I can't sleep. I've got anxiety. Yeah. Now. Come stay with me. She's <laughs> like, yeah. No, I've gone way. I've gone way off subject as yeah. normal there, but. Can I, can I, yeah. uh, about yeah. mine, because we spoke about this earlier and it was really interesting. So, um, yeah, you know, like yourself, I've, I've lived with a, a mental illness that when I look back uh, and we talk about recovery and I'll, I'll, I'll share my story in, in a moment, if that's right. But when it, I remember things very clearly, um, I was traveling a lot for work and, and I'd always, I guess, very, very different career to you, but I lived in a, in a world where I was surrounded by people. Um, there's a, one here if you want a water, so yeah. Um, where I was surrounded by people, I was surrounded by alcohol, I was surrounded by uh, dinners and meals uh, and everything else that goes with it, yet there was this huge part of me that felt so alone. And I could never put it into words. Uh, I, you know, now when I'm in a room of people, I feel like I've got my whole. I brought my whole self to this room. Whereas back when I was was living with with my mental illness, I was just on my own. I was isolated. And I'd be playing with my children, and it would just be a process. I mean, it would just be like yeah, there was nothing, yeah. no emotion. And I'd even be sat there going, "How am I feeling alone when I'm with my kids?" And it was just this hollowness. And I remember it's these various things happening and, and I kind of started reading into what it was and, and realized that I was had a form of depression. And, it, and fate took a massive, massive twist in this because I, was, I knew I had to start talking to people. So I opened up to my wife and I was like, something's not right. And it must have been that very night or the night after, one of my best mates, one of my longest standing mates texted me and he said, um, I've just got off the phone with another one of our mates. He's not in a good place. Can you can you have a word with him? 
And I'm denied and I wrote a message back going, yeah, I'll, I'll give him a chat. And I deleted it and I went, actually, mate, I'm not in a good place either. And I hovered over it for a while. So all I could think about was my poor mates text me to say my mate's not in a good place. And now I'm going to drop on him that I'm not in a good place. And I was like, ah, oh, should I do it? Should I not do it? Should I not do it? And I pressed send and I was like, fuck. And then he replied and he was like, what do you mean? Why aren't you telling of us? I was like, well, you're my mates and I don't want to pollute this pool. I don't want to pollute this pool of what's here, you know? Because we don't talk about it. And, and if I do that, then we've got to talk about it. And he was like, you're an idiot. Of course we've got to talk about it. And, and the relief I felt in that moment, and it, these are the things that you never forget, where you go out on a limb and you kind of say, you know, I'm here as well. And, and then we, we'd have these like three-way calls where my poor mate who, who I can honestly say has never had any kind of, you know, mental depression in his life or mental illness. He's got two guys talking to him who are both unloading. And but the strength we got from each other where we were able to kind of be like, man, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you say it? And it was just such an amazing thing. And it, and it kind of, what I always say to people now, you know, you just got to have the balls. And I know that's an easy thing to say because it's not that easy, but you you got to, if you spot a sign that someone's not doing well, reach out and try and make it as easy for them as you can because it could be the hardest thing for them to do. But once they reach out, it's often the biggest reward. It's often the biggest feeling of euphoria to be able to say, I've shared this now. So I can't endorse it enough. People just got to, you know, got to do it. Got to absolutely do it. So, um... Yeah, I mean, any more questions from the floor from anyone? Yeah. Um, yeah. First, I really identify with your story, guys. Um, yeah, that must share a problem for yourself. But looking at it now, um, when you said that your friends weren't there to like offer you help, do you think that those friends would have actually been able to help you? So, um, can I just be repeated for the camera? So basically, those friends there because there's music playing. Those friends that you weren't sure for there, do you think they would have been able to help if, no, if we had, no? not at all, not at all. I don't think any, 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 any most of the people around me would, would don't know and wouldn't know. I, literally, when I met you yesterday, I was so excited to tell Emily about yeah. who you are and what you do. Yeah. Because I relate to it. Because mm. if I had you, I would have come to you. Yeah, I'd yeah, have you yeah. Time. <laughs> you got and, me now. Uh, well, so we're, we're launching this new uh, so, uh, mental health kind of event in yeah. London. And yeah, it's kind of, to have you in front of four or five hundred people yeah. explain what you do, I think would then, it's mad. No, they yeah. didn't. No, I don't think anyone did, apart from my mum. Yeah. Because she's dealt with it since the army days. And a few people, a few people reach out, but it's, yeah, there's no. You have to wonder if it's heartfelt. Yeah. Or if it's ticking a box and they go, well, I've asked, yeah. I've done my bit. It's, um, you know, it's the same with, uh, you know, it's very, it's a tricky subject, so like I said, I think people don't understand. I mean, if it's right, I'll explain what, what we do and how we try and help. With, we are Hummingbird, because when I was, when I had my, you know, my period of, of depression, I started looking around at what I related to, and I could find loads and loads of articles, but none of it really gave me that feeling inside that it understood me and that uh, I could open up to it. And there's loads and loads of amazing, amazing organizations out there, but I just didn't relate to them. And that was the biggest hurdle for me to kind of be, how do I tell, how do I open up about the biggest, inner, most sacred thing to me if I don't feel that I relate? And I mean, so I started looking at what, what we need to do is we are Hummingbird. There'd, there'd always been this uh, two great guys that I, um, that, that kind of founded We Are Hummingbird following the death of one of their really, really close friends to suicide. And they kind of started to lash out and think again, they don't relate to anything. And if there's nothing that they relate to, there must be millions of people that don't relate to this. So it started out for, as a little platform for, for kind of spreading the word and our, our mission, and it's always remained the same, was if we can help one person, we're, we're happy, you know? If we can impart some knowledge or take the, the stress or the worry or just let someone speak openly, then we've done everything we set out to do. And for a long time, we kind of, um, we'd release playlists, we'd get people in the industry we knew to submit 12 tracks that meant something to them, and it could be anything, it could be, you know, Venga Boys, Spice Girls, Iron Maiden, whatever it was that helped them through dark periods. And then we'd put it out on Spotify and we'd share it and kind of be like, look, this is what we've got. 
And if anyone can then find our website and then find that, you know, support to any of these great organizations, then amazing. And then when I, uh, so I used to work as, as we mentioned in, in the, the finance industry and in the insurance industry and, and kind of just plodded along in the life as I mentioned and never fitted in. And when I started to learn about my own mental illness, I thought, yeah, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna train, I'm gonna qualify to, to go and educate other people on what I went through. And that's exactly what I did. So I started going out and, and educating myself to become a mental health first aider. And I was thought if I can go around to organizations or to music festivals or to retreats like this and start talking to people on a level that they understand because I'm on the same level, I talk the same way and I can change one person's life through a conversation, then I'm doing it. And I had everyone saying, well, you're, you're, I remember being in Germany with my mates. I was like, guys, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna leave my job and I'm gonna go and work in mental health, beer in hand whilst I said it. And they were like, what? What are you on about? And I was like, I've never been so sure of anything in my life. Anything. And they were like, really? I was like, I just, I know, I can feel it inside me. This is what I, this is what I was born to do. And I went and I qualified and I started doing that. And that for me became all the positive mental health that started to rebuild me as an individual. Seeing people's faces when I spoke to them, seeing people that thought they had an understanding be told facts about what a mental illness is and what actually how to differentiate between the two and how they can try things that might be able to improve their mental health. And they're like, what? Why do I not know this? And like, well, you don't know what you don't know. And it kind of snowballed from there from us. And you know, we've gone on to, to educate you know, nearly a thousand people in a really short space of time around mental health awareness, how to spot the signs and symptoms so that people can see when, when, when others around them are suffering, they can kind of reach out. But also know how to deal with any hot potatoes that come back, you know? You've told me a bit of information, what do I do with it now? And I think I find a lot that people's worry about mental illness is that they're going to be told something and they feel that they've taken on that person's you know problem when often someone who has a mental illness or poor mental health just wants to be listened to mm. just wants to be able to talk without being judged or looked down upon or given sympathy oh wow well, at least you at least you had a good you know a couple of years before you got ill at least you you know no one wants to hear that someone wants to hear Shit, man, that must be awful. I, I don't understand what you're going through, but man, that sucks. And then it was going through all this and I started to really kind of get a, a passion for um, talking about suicide. And that sounds really strange to a lot of people because again, no one wants to talk about suicide. It's like the elephant in the room. And it started to really, really, really great me. And I, I, the one that got me the most, and I, did, I still don't know why, is the, the guy that was in Guy was in Love Island, and uh, you know, sadly he he you know he took his own life for, for the reasons that he had, and I remember watching it just absolutely heartbroken. Didn't know him, I hadn't even really been a fan or a follower, and I just had this pain in my heart where I was like, I'm fed up of this. I'm fed up of people doing this, and people not having the balls to stand up and help and really kind of like listen to people. So then I went off and qualified him uh, to, to, in suicide prevention and intervention and to also, as well as qualifying, I, I instruct it. So I go again around to organizations and try and talk to people about how to recognize the signs and symptoms, how to step in, how to hold that hot potato for someone and what to do and what not to do until they can get professional help. Because all these things, we all have it inside us we're all good, generally good human beings. We just don't often know how to best, what to say or how to talk to other people. Like you said earlier, you know, when, you, when people would kind of not know how to behave around you, I don't think they're bad people. They just don't know how to act. They haven't been told. And it's kind of going around and educating them. So, so for me, it's, it's an absolute passion of mine now. I mean, it's what I live for. It's, it's what I, you know, every day of my life I breathe. I want to talk to people and I want to educate and I want to learn. I want to learn more and every day I do this, I learn something I didn't know yesterday. I think it's the most amazing thing ever. So, uh, you know, and I'm honoured to be here talking to you today so, because it's, yeah, it's right. awesome to do. I think and it's I, the right timing as well, linking up with, yeah, with us as well. completely. Especially where we're going into next year of starting a new parties to kind of, uh, we're starting a new party on a Tuesday 
in in uh, in the UK. Um, she's gonna call Belief, myself and Emily over here. Um, you might, you might, might be telling them. Do you talking quickly about it? No, yeah. no, no. So go yeah, for it. Good, I'll be you, there. Um, <laughs> like statistically, looking looking into it, like Tuesday is a day when people in my industry, clubbers will think about suicide or will, is, they're still on the buzz on Monday, they come out of the clubs, they go to work, they're still a little bit buzzing from the drugs. Tuesday, we call it Suicide Tuesday, and if you're not from the UK, that's kind of what, what we've always called it. So we're trying to get rid of this stigma around it, and we were like, well, what if we could get people out on a Tuesday night, get them fit, get them, get some good food inside them, do have like a Q&A with like really famous or not so famous DJs, promoters, clubbers that have gone through drug addictions and come out on top, but also be able to dance. Yeah. So yeah, we found a club where we're going to do like a four to five hour party, which will be... Getting those endorphins going, yeah. Um, Kev, who's just walked in there. Hey, how you doing? Um, Kev is actually my fitness instructor here, who I met, who's 20, how long clean now? Uh, 29 weeks is nice one, man. Weeks yeah, cool. so like, well, why wouldn't I work with a piece? Yeah, on yeah. the same journey. So, yeah, he came in at the time. We're kind of launching this party. Um, so it's gonna be fitness inside a nightclub, but like a fun, like getting your body moving in a yeah. 3D way rather than just sitting down all day. And then, like, a QA like this, but with hundreds of people that have got problems that are coming inside a club to talk about it. Maybe yeah. the club that gave them the yeah. problems. Yeah, in yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, and then full circle recovery. Yeah, yeah we're that's it. In like the, the, the what well, I think you had the gong therapy this morning. We're oh, kind yeah. of putting in that kind of element of sound. Um, there, there's a there's a tribe out here called uh, Ibango tribe. They're like these drummers that play yeah. banamas and stuff. They're gonna fly over and plug into the mixers with keyboards, and we're just gonna take people on a journey of what they call it's like melodic techno. So it's like it, I think it kind of heals. Yeah, you yeah, bit, yeah. So, but with no drugs being yeah. sold, not sold, but taken, taken sold yeah, yeah. in clubs, no drink, yeah. it's all going to be super smooth beers yeah. and food that can kind yeah, of excellent. open up your heart and stuff. So that's going to be launching in London. There's loads of sober parties out there. Yeah. No one's actually tackling it full on with yeah. putting drug therapists in. Yeah. You know, we're, we're bringing you everything you need, yeah. but at the end we can have a little party. Yeah. And if we can get them into bed by 12 or 1, They've got this good night's sleep they've, as well. They've got this buzz. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had a night out, but I've left and I still feel like I've danced. Yeah. I've listened to, I remember all the music. Yeah. And I learned loads about taking too yeah, much coke. Yeah. And yeah. actually, I'm going to stop taking coke. Yeah. And actually, I'm yeah. sober. Yeah. yeah, it's so it's so important, and, and it won't it won't you know we're we're you, we're not going to change everyone, and, and and that's not the point of it. It's the point of of helping people to understand what mental health is, and you know they might go to that on a Tuesday, and then go out and have an actual you know a balanced night a weekend, or go and have a meal with a glass of wine or two the other night. It's 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 a balance of of trying to understand what healthy mental health is and, and understanding, and obviously those that are on a recovery journey completely will have options to be able to go out. The main yeah. thing for me is I always, I, I always in my head thought I can't go out yeah, without yeah, drugs. Yeah. That is, I yeah, think the belief. main thing now, the problem in the dance music world is every single punter believes that they cannot yeah. have a good time in that club without drugs. Yeah. And that's it, end of. And that's just because they've been told that and that's how we've been conditioned since yeah. I was young too. Yeah. You have to drink and you have to take drugs to have a good time. Not yeah. all the time, but, yeah, most, people, but most people. Like, like, you'll meet a few that don't drink. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard. I can't go out till seven in the morning and dance anymore. Yeah. I leave at three. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, and done. Yeah. Would you try to go on tour with that? Because I really think America and the States, a lot of people need that. Especially Sign like me DJs. up. So, I mean, <laughs> like, no, like a really good this is this is what we're trying to do. Yeah, but like it's called believe, and it's but believe. Tuesday is the new Saturday. Believe, you know, believe is people that want to hear you. Yeah. Believe you to somewhere you can come and talk. Mm. It's like you know the, what we what we've got behind it. We've, we haven't launched yet. It's about to launch, but I I believe it will be as big as a boat very very soon. Okay. Um, my new business. Part you should come to New York because they have like these um, like sober but morning parties. Yeah, we have a morning yeah. Gloryville. But I like yeah. the I like the sober night party. Yeah. That yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless there's somebody doing it, you know. And this, luckily, I didn't Facebook Live this because like, someone's going to be like patterns in it. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think it will be. I think it'll start off as a small nightclub event. Probably move into like a day festival, small day festival, somewhere like Studio Free Free. Yeah, Anger. yeah. And then I think, that, you know, the end goal is to have a festival. I know there are festivals, and uh, who is it? The Duck Fern Cotton. Uh, Fern yeah, she, uh, she does. Uh, I want to say Happy. Happy Days. Uh, happy Days is Brandon Block. Yeah, no, no, no. She, Fern, Fern Cotton does Happy. 
days. Happy days festival. Oh, uh, okay. People with well, sober people, and I think autistic. Yeah, it's a mixture, isn't it? But uh, mainly yeah. people that don't want to drink and yeah. be around drugs. I mean, it feels like something that should be happening in the beaker as well. Yeah. Like, so, so I read, I read an article last we, year. Yeah. We could have a party yeah. tonight and yeah. drink and take drugs. Yeah. You know, like, and that would be a great end to this. So maybe next. Yeah. Year we'll Something like twenty-seven percent of under twenty-fives don't drink or take drugs now. You know, they, they that that's the highest that stats ever been yeah. for under for under age. Well, they no, they, they you know they they they're just doing other things. Believe it or not, they don't think going out and getting drunk is cool anymore. And it's like, well, I mean, I you know, my uh, like, going to cope with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think like when I saw that my niece's friends were doing ketamine at fifteen. Yeah, like, and so. Like, Ketamine wasn't around. It probably was when I was young, but it wasn't. Uh, yeah. So I was 15 years old. And I was yeah. like, God. And then a couple of them come to Ibiza last year, and they weren't even 18, and they were like, Yeah, taking. Uh, you know. Cocktail of drugs at 17. I'm like, Oh, no, I remember. It's just mad. It's mad. Yeah. It's getting. It's, it's, it's going to eventually, I think, like. It's become this whole drug culture. It's yeah. become trendy now on yeah. Instagram. And, and, and I think, so can I just yeah. say one more? Yeah, of course. I think, like, being able to go out and have a good time and party without being drunk or taking drugs is something that I struggle with. Yeah. Like I've started not going out yeah. because yeah. I don't want to be sucked into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being out and being sober and being around people that are partying, you kind of feel like a party people. Yeah, you have to yeah. Be yeah. Around the right people, yeah. It does make yeah. a big difference to your. You around find it. You found yeah. it really difficult recently. Yeah. yeah. In the big, uh, this is my second season doing it sober, and the first season was a quite a mental struggle but I was forcing myself to go out too much okay now I found the perfect balance, balance and yeah because like, I love the music I love to dance so I need that fix as well so yeah I, when I feel like it's right and I have sat there and on my bed thinking right a mental battle do I go do I not go yeah like, but and I've, I've gone and I've enjoyed it and, and it hasn't been as frequent as my as, life as, yeah yeah so completely just enough to give me yeah. that, that fix that I need yeah my treat was always just to pretend. How so? I used yeah. to go out, I used to pretend. I'd yeah. go out with my mates and they'd be boshing pills like five an hour or whatever. Yeah. And they'd be giving me the pills, I'd be taking them. Would you? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. I'd be getting off the vibe, you know. I mean, it obviously wasn't not going out and not doing anything. But I found that the rate and just the frequency was, for me, the music was always yeah. what drove me to be there in the first place. Yeah. That was the thing that got kind of lost in this whole pursuit of just being endlessly more high. Yeah. I think the music thing. has been pushed back in a lot of, you know, now it's like... It's, it's not maybe one of the reasons why it is now such a big thing, yeah. because there's so many people that led into yeah. believing it's amazing, or yeah. believing they love it, yeah. because they're in another, an altered state. They're told, yeah. You know, and uh, maybe that's why this sort of vibe of people who really are there for the music has been diluted. Yeah, I, exactly. I hear the music better when I'm so far. Yeah. Yeah. I feel well, it more. Yeah. I, 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 you know, ketamine yeah, is absolutely destroyed. So I've only been doing this seven years, and it came big probably seven years ago. It's destroyed dance. I paid 25000 for a DJ before, yeah. and they've come on, and everyone has just stood there like on the ketamine. Yeah, because the they're not moving. Yeah, the dance yeah. Floor, like, I've never, like, ecstasy, I think, is the one drug, if they were going to legalize yeah, anything, they were going to create good. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's difficulties come with it, but you know, it's, 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 if you just, if you get rid of all the other ones, I think that's the one yeah. that doesn't cause as many well, problems. The one, the one that you guys don't think about, though, with especially with the younger kids, is social media is actually a drug. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's an instant dopamine yeah. fix every time, and like they grew up on that. Like I'm 30, I grew up with you know dial up. Yeah. Like internet yeah. connection. Like, but the kids growing up, they, they, that's their drug. Yeah. They're not taking drugs, but like. That, that, I think that will be actually a big so, so to get it to get it on on the mic certainly for for French Gordon so social media is uh, I don't know that it's an area I want to run down today because I think we've probably spoke for long enough and we could probably do a whole other topic on this but there's always the argument as we'll get from this there's the good and the bad there's the is it driving negativity is it actually you know social media for someone that lives in the middle of nowhere with no friends or family around being able to connect with someone is a wonderful thing so it has its pros and cons it's I guess how we we try and find that balance which which as I said I don't know that we'll find an answer for in the next few minutes so it might be one to part but yeah it's there and and the other thing I would say is to, to kind of think about this is this in its own sense on social media will, will, will drive haters it does there'll be people that don't maybe understand why we're having this conversation or what we're doing um, 
or what this is even for the purpose of, you know, and, and, and I've got an idea. For me, it's that if one person watches this and can connect, then I don't care if we get a thousand haters as far as I'm concerned. I mean, is, 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 what's your thoughts on, on um, that? I, yeah, I'm, a, a lot of people don't, won't comment bad on my stocks. I'm, I don't know, I'll ban them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm quite lucky that, but yeah, you're going to get them. And you, you'll probably find it's in group chat, yeah. which, is a, which is a thing. But I've got, it's mad. I've got, I saw one negative post about my journey on, on being sober. And that was a guy the other day on Twitter put, um, Kaya Bode is the new talk to Frank these days. Yeah. Straight away, I was like, it's, like, it's not actually that bad. Yeah. Had hundreds of retweets, but then in my head, I'm like, well, yeah. I, got, uh, why are people tweet? You know, yeah. people don't follow. So I started through my head. Started exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Stuff up of I had 200 haters on Twitter. Yeah. And that's just from one tweet. One tweet. And luckily, the new me, I, I, it was like oh, yeah. nothing. I had it yesterday. Yeah. Ago, I'd have gone through and blocked every single yeah. person that retweeted it. <laughs> Put in the system and got a banner for every club for life. Yeah. That's, like, yeah. that's like literally what social media can do. And I don't get many haters. Yeah. But since I've been actually since I've been on this journey, I'm getting more negative. Yeah, comments yeah. Than positive. If it actually pays off, because it might have been the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so but, if anyone uh, pisses you off, or you want to yeah. charge fifty quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The question. Yeah. You're like kind of uh, working in mental health services in England, and it just has so much money thrown at it, and there are there are so many services that. Are, um, so if somebody was having a crisis, yeah. you can get them signposted quite easily, directed, and obviously it's a free service. Yes. And I often wonder how that works out here, because obviously you've, got, you've had the CBT. How would it work for somebody out here? You know, with the, is it private? I'm glad you, you know? said that, because when I, when I was in a real bad way, I was sat there, and there's, there's, a, there's a Facebook group in Ibiza called Ibiza Winter Residents. It's the one-stop shop you go to with a question, and it's got everyone that lives here on the island. So if you're looking, what time's the shop open? Does anyone have any, any antibiotics? I've got any, you know, you can literally yep. ask anything. And I thought, fuck, where to, like, who do I go to to say I need help? I'm, like, losing the plot. I literally couldn't think. I couldn't write on Abbey Foot Residence that there's anyone only drug counselors. Yeah. I couldn't write it on Facebook. I googled a few, but there were retreats for mm -hmm. like ten thousand pounds. I was like, fuck. Like I f I'm like literally about to kill myself. That's how bad it got. Yeah. But so it's the not there then. I, I couldn't find it. Luckily, yeah. one of our friends, um, for the, for whatever reason, said, "Speak to this woman. She's she's cured." you know, a couple of people. If it wasn't for that, yeah. I'm not sure they'd yeah. be here. That's so scary, isn't it? There is, a, but she's in, Kate's put me on to, I've got my diagnosis with, um, with the ADHD and got, got this amazing medication which helped me. Then she put me on to, uh, as cocaine, narcotics and alcohol yeah. anonymous, all in IB for yeah. all British run. Yeah. She put yeah. me on to all these. But I've never, I, I didn't go to them, so it's like, well, I'm not an addict. Yeah. So yeah. I've gone to them. And that, then there yeah. is a massive support network, yeah. but if you don't know where to go. Yeah, and completely. And you think I would be in as linked as I am, I didn't know, yeah. know anyone. I couldn't write it online. I think that's probably about like room for kind of that kind yeah. of connection. Yeah. Well, I've even had it myself, where a best friend of mine was having a crisis, you know, desperately needed like that. It, Cross intervention, and I didn't know where to go. And that was out here, was it? In, life, in, the, UK. in the UK. You, know, you maybe can't really buy, yeah, yeah. You can't buy any drug counselors in your WhatsApp group. Is there, not, yeah. Yeah. Is there not like a phone, like UK, I'm trying to remember. So, there's a phone like, team. Yeah, UK, like, there's, there's, the so UK, there's, there's stuff. Something. It's weird though, but I, feel, I, I know all these, even yeah. though I know all these. But I wouldn't even, I wouldn't be able go. to tell you now in no, any country. No, yeah. no, I, 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 I know there's mine, but at the time, I was yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. what are they going to do? I mean, I'd be so. Just a lot open. Like the, the, some of the, depending on what it needs to happen, it's like they're on the op, their operating hours aren't yeah. really conducive to when you've got problems yeah, as well. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, cool. and, then, and then things have to get to a certain really bad point before they're actually then that help engage. That's yeah. what like something to think about as well, because I mean yeah. the whole recovery stuff is brilliant, but then when yeah. they're in that, that point, you know, that real crisis point, and don't know where to turn. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's and that's that's the key thing, yeah. Think about like promoting that kind of education and awareness. Mm. Yeah, I'm next with step. me at the moment. I'm just <laughs> I'm trying to like find my end where I'm going. I'm, you know, yeah. and I'm still on my journey, so yeah. I'm trying to the things I'm setting up are stuff that I know I'm comfortable with. with. Like I'm not. I wouldn't be comfortable yeah. sitting up telling people about depression now. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. But the party for me was it's a starting point. Exactly, just and that's to show people that don't want to go too far that way. Yeah. You just need a bit of this and a bit yeah. of this and a bit of this, you'll feel a bit better. Yeah. And then with people like you, yeah. we're going to... Gonna... There's, a, there's an amazing quote that I, I still reel out, and it says, um, the biggest, most powerful things 
always start from a few people getting together and have conversations about something they're passionate about. <laughs> She's right? like you're laughing at Yeah, that's how everything starts. It doesn't matter how big it ends up, it all started from a few people who are passionate about something, having a conversation. And for me, us doing this and one person feeling that they can get something from it or two or three or four or whatever it is is the start of this and 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 you know i'm conscious of time so i'm probably gonna wrap it up for now if that's okay and if there's any more oh, one more and then we'll it's and then we'll to take out of this for you guys. yeah uh, I, I i came here like this isn't any we don't get paid for this is saying i don't i was asked to do and i'm really grateful to be on it and I, a lot of people were like well, you should be you should be charging for that but I've, I've actually met it's like networking i've met two people here that i didn't know I've just pulled off, since I left the other night, I've just pulled off two massive deals for a boat, but only because I met them here. I didn't even know they were, I met them here, and something's just happened, it's gonna like take us global. So the importance of these, what, these little, whether it's this or anything you get invited to as a DJ or whatever yeah. you guys are all doing, I can't stress how important it is. Because if the and they come here, certain things would yeah exactly place, exactly know, so. well, by saying that, I thank you for being here thank you for listening you know, mate really yes. helpful. now the next question is like when you get a creative block it's also a sense of depression because if you have that creative block for like a week or a month or so you know you get down on yourself and for like we don't have kids or we don't really like try to supplement drugs for anything as a, a inspiration uh, what, what would you say how do you progress from that to get back into the inspiration to be positive <clears throat> Finish on that one. So, <laughs> mind, I have goals. I'm a goal setter. Yeah. And, and my goal was to, you know, I've always set goals and was to meet. It's always like, yeah, have a, I write my goals down. Short term. Well. Short term right. and yeah. long term. Okay, okay. Um, and I do whatever I've got to do to reach them. As yeah. In the last eight, 18 weeks, the goal I've done ticked off more than I've ticked yeah. off in 10 years. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, just. Just keep positive. Would you say a vision board would be very helpful to look yeah, at? Yeah, well, so if you know. haven't seen it, I started with the secret, the film, the secret. That's the, that's the yeah, we've been spoken a lot this week, actually. Right? Yeah, the yeah. The mag There's loads of them. They're all like starter at yeah. entry level. But if you, can, if, you, if you can read that of an open mind and take something from it, that, that for me was the thing that changed my life. Is that yeah. book. But I, I watched the film because yeah. I'm not great at reading. But yeah. Um, yeah, that was it, really. Just set goals. My goals was to work with Emily, like this, the lady behind you. Like, and we've set off goals to do, which, yeah, it's mad. Grow and grow and grow. Said, yeah, one day we do this, how are we going to do it? Let's yeah. try and, yeah, we've got that. It's there. important. But I've only learned that recently. Just, I used to set goals and I kind of fell off the wagon, but yeah. now I'm like, yeah. I set the goals really small at the beginning. Yeah, okay, okay. build them up. American general who was like, he used to be really strict about people making their beds in the morning. Yeah. And that was his thing. He goes, right, you know, this only one thing, you'll make your bunk in the morning. Start people off. People sort of asked something. him why, and they said, because at the end of the day, if you don't achieve anything, you've got a really bad day. You're going to get home and go, I did that. Yeah, yeah. And that's going to be that one, that one, one step. Yeah. That one small bit at a time. Yeah. Because, you, know, you need to make it achievable. Yeah. So look, World Mental Health Day 2019. It's been a pleasure to sit with you for how long it's been. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. And, uh, see you in America. See you in America. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everyone.